it's it's time to get going here. Um, wanted to welcome you first off to this wonderful uh, webinar that we have, DocLink, Document Management for Sage, the life of a paperless office. Um, really excited. I am Katie Geyer, Customer Success Manager here at BrainCell, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Perry Lynn Selkwood. Um, she is Sales Director Extraordinaire. Um, <laughs> here at DocLink. So she's gonna take us through, uh, again, what I said, a really exciting journey, and uh, hopefully it's a lot of information. So I just wanna remind everyone that um, we will be sending you a link to this as well afterwards, so don't feel like you need to take it all in. Um, and as with anything, we always have more questions, so feel free to reach out to either one of us after. So I think we're ready to, uh, to jump into the agenda, Perry Lynn. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Well, hello and welcome everyone. I'm really, really thrilled to have this opportunity to kind of showcase and talk about DocLink and how it can really transform your organization. Uh, and Katie's right, we're going to cover a lot of information. And the reason why is because because of the scalability of DocLink, there is an opportunity to use it in many different areas. So if any of the concepts that we start talking about today resonate with you, then I would invite you to reach out to the brain cell team and set up what's called a discovery call where we can dive a little bit deeper into your business practices. But let's start talking about making this digital transformation. So when we talk about, about DocLink, we talk about it with a lens of transforming our remote workforce and allowing all of the people that are either remote workers or even warehouse workers or in the office all having access to documentation. Not only the documentation, but wrapping our arms around the business process in moving those documents around the organization and being able to create transactions. So we're really trying to support the remote office workers um, towards the end of making a digital transformation. And we hear this concept of digital transformation a lot in our organization. Uh, if I think about it, I think about it really through the lens of trying to say, hey, listen, we need to connect the right people you know, with the right documents, uh, support the right business processes and transaction, and really enable your organization to be more competitive in the marketplace. So that's a little bit about what we're gonna cover today. But Katie, why don't you bring us through kind of what we're going to cover, and yep. then we even have a poll coming up to kind of, you know, really set the stage for today's conversation. Yes, yeah, so before we jump into the agenda today, um, don't forget to submit any questions that you may have, um, mm. and we'll try to answer them in the Q&A at the end of the session. So um, again, just feel free to add that into the link. And so we're going to go first up, why go paperless with DocLink? Uh, moving on to the departments where DocLink will provide impact, right? So it has accounts payable, quote cash, accounts receivable, human resources, contract management. Um, Parlin will go into a few other departments um, and then we'll just finish up with the DocLink difference. Oh, I love it. Well, let's maybe uh, initiate a poll because I think it's always really nice to not only engage the audience a little bit, but understand what's happening in your organizations. So Katie, how about- Absolutely, we do yes. So um, why are you attending today's webinar? So, mm -hmm. and just please select all that apply. You want a solution that meets the needs of a hybrid workforce, learn about the benefits of going paperless and automation, learn how DocLink can be used company-wide across departments, or all of the above. Love it. So just add your, and as you can see, the poll is coming up. So all of the above, Perry Lynn, you have a lot to cover <laughs> for sure. I see that, oh my gosh, absolutely. And so we're gonna try and cover all of it. So let's blaze a trail and, and we'll kind of start off by talking about why go paperless? What are some of the, the needs or traditional needs of an organization and what are they trying to do? So um, I've been with, with Alltech and DocLink for about 15 years now. And I always thought that there was like a magic bullet, but as many times as I'm talking to not only existing customers, but new customers as well, it all distills back to these kind of six core elements. So people are coming to DocLink because they want better accessibility to documents. No more storing documents in filing cabinets or 
even on a network file share or in a warehouse floor, you know, or down in the dungeon or up in the attic, they want things easily available. Uh, the next thing is that they want to be able to streamline any kind of manual business process. Now we're going to talk a lot and I'm going to show you about AP automation today and what it means to have a digital transformation on the AP side of the house, but those core concepts are applicable throughout the organization as well. Uh, another thing that organizations are really needing to do is to minimize data entry. Why? Because we're trying to scale the organization without adding headcount and also allow the systems to do the heavy lifting. Right. So why use the human when the computer can do the effort? Let's use the human where that where the actual value add is going to be. Uh, now we can also talk about automated document delivery. Uh, think about it in terms of documents that are going outside of the organization. It could be a purchase order going to a vendor with some kind of supporting documents. It could be on the AR side of the house, an invoice going out to customers with some kind of supporting documents. So it's really thinking about how do we do, you know, achieve this digital transformation. One of the things that sets Stocklink apart is this concept of OOB, out of the box integration. And we'll talk about that as well today in terms of why is that important and where are those points of integration. And then also, let's not forget about audits. Uh, because everything, all documents are in a nice tight packet, they're much more easily accessible to auditors, and there can also be some cost savings um, towards a simplified audit as well. And then my challenge to you is think very broadly today. So DocLink can absolutely help with any document, any document report form, right? any process accessible anywhere. So really think about today, where are those paper-based bottlenecks and pinches in the organization that have a financial impact. So that's what we're really gonna be talking about. Now, if I was in your shoes, I would also want to be um, very clear on what is the possible return on investment. I'm spending this today in a manual business process. I have to spend this for technology. You know, what is my return? So there are very, very specific areas that we can go to in order to calculate that return on investment savings for you. So take a look at these three buckets here. Um, it could be like a hard dollar um, savings or a soft dollar savings. Both are, are, are equal really in my mind. But look at the cost savings. What are you spending today in offsite storage? Right. What is the square footage of the filing cabinets that you have or the warehouse um, space that you're storing maybe your documents? What are you spending on the paper and copier machine? Right, That contract can also be collapsed or reduced. Personnel is a real easy one. Right, Can you grow without adding headcount? And there's a real so solid and simple ROI. So you'll see in each of these areas that if you start kind of being reflective in terms of understanding, well, what am I doing in this area today? It costs X, all right? And then that way you can determine what the, what the actual savings are. I love the strategic initiatives column here because at, depending where you are in the organization, we are always trying to align ourselves with the growth of the company or the company expectations and initiatives. And so if we want to be able to grow without adding headcount, and I know I've said that many times already, that's an, an easy area to look to, you know, to, do, to drive an ROI equation. But there's all sorts of areas, you know, will it enable you to go after early pay discounts? Do you pay a lot in late fees today? Uh, so there's a lot of different areas that we can really help drive uh, efficiency, drive cost savings, time savings, and really align with those corporate initiatives. All right, so, I want to set the stage with um, explaining to you how DocLink works. And in my mind, you know, if I can impart to you how DocLink works, then you can really think about any business process in your organization and really decide, you know, how are you doing that today and how DocLink might work. So let's take a look at this diagram. And I'm going to go in a clockwise, starting over here at Capture. So when I'm doing a discovery call with a client, you know, um, I'm really wanting them to, to tell me 
number one, what are the top goals that they're trying to achieve as a company? And then we map out the business process. And in the back of my mind, I'm really thinking about, okay, what is the document? What is the best methodology that we have in our staff in order to do the most efficient capture uh, methodology? There's lots of things that we can do. Once we've captured a document into DocLink, now we can take action, right? And many times that's going to be under the process section where we're driving that through some kind of business process or workflow, right, in order to maybe get an approval or coding or some kind of collaboration about the document. And then based on the integration that we have, we're going to take that document and data and move it into the ERP application, your financial accounting application. And the beautiful part there is that now you're able to view documents, right? We're saving time throughout the entire process and you are saving time on data entry. And now you can view those documents right within the screens in the ERP. And then depending on who you are in the user community, you can also look for those documents right from within DocLink. Uh, you can use a mobile device, you can use it on web, right? So there's a lot of different methodologies to, to search for documents also. And then way down here at the bottom, we have this concept of deliver. And that's that we can, once we've captured a document or documents you know, into DocLink, now based on the time of your choice, we can then distribute those documents out. And we'll cover a couple different scenarios today as well. Okay, so that's kind of just setting the stage a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is let's have Katie kind of step in here and you know, uh, yeah. ask the departments. <laughs> <laughs> right, so our next poll question are what departments are you looking to improve or enhance, right? So accounts payable, um, sales order process to AR, HR, legal or other right and you can again select all that apply no this one will be interesting yes and right <laughs> drum we'll use our time wisely here too if we want to focus really deeply on ap we can do that you know and, and have a little bit of flexibility with everyone yeah so really important for you to answer so that um perry link can direct the all right, well, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so accounts payable, sales order processing to AR and HR, pretty much. Okay, people. love it. Well, then let's do it, let's do it. All right, so then we're talk about the impact, all right, to the organization and all the various departments. And let's start with accounts payable. Um, it's interesting when, for DocLink, because it's so scalable right, and considered an enterprise-wide document management and workflow tool, there's a lot of different departments that can open up the conversation. But it's really interesting because it seems like even if one of those other processes that you selected initiate the conversation, a lot of people come back to AP. And like you're seeing here on the screen, I think it's just because it's simply a wash in paper and we can really transform that or that uh, part of the organization and department uh, really quickly. And so here are the top things that people are looking for uh, when they're looking for AP automation. Right. And it can be that we're looking at just, you know, two way or three way matching. And it'd be interesting to see how many of you really require that, you know, um, as an organization. We're seeing that timely approvals anywhere, that becomes a critical thing. We are losing invoices. That means we're paying late fees or not after go after those early paid discount or it's just a time, a time issue, right? Uh, minimizing data entry and eliminate filing, right? Thinking how much time are you spending at those filing cabinets today? and enabling that remote workforce by having that self-service access to documents. So that's what we're really driving towards on the AP side. And then of course we want to take advantage of the seamless integration, taking documents and data, collecting the data as it moves through the process through automation, and then taking that document and, and data and transforming it into the ERP. All right, let's do a compare and contrast. So, Think about what you're doing today in terms of your invoice processing. So it may look something like this, right? We're talking about this manual process, a little bit painful. An invoice comes in, you're probably doing it via email, invoice is coming in via email, and the regular US mail. Most people tell me that they're actually printing it, 
if it comes in via email. And if it comes in via mail, then they're doing that stamp, right, of date. You know, there's a section for the GL code. You know, there's a section for the signature. And then they're taking the PO and they're physically matching the documents together, right? And then it's now time to get that approval. So how are they doing approvals? Are they using a cubby, right? I've heard that before. Uh, are they rescanning now to email, right? So there's a lot of possibilities in terms of how people are doing it today. And I'm just really highlighting, you can start seeing where all these areas to maximize efficiency are in the organization. And then we want to do coding, right? Is that done by the approval manager? Sometimes, a lot of passion behind that kind of topic. Uh, and once it's approved, then we're back to AP for ERP entry, right? We're creating that transaction in the ERP. Posting it, cutting the check. Oh, I love this part, right? <laughs> Stapling the check to the invoice, you know, and getting it um, signed off. And then we're back to the filing cabinets for search and retrieval. So you just think about that process and there's a lot of manual touching and manipulating of documents, right? And, 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 and moving it here and moving it there. And at each step, there's a possibility for that invoice to get lost in the process. So there is lots of opportunity for a huge amount of reduction and the processing costs, you know, which really equate to time and opening up the organization to be able to go after those early paid discounts or late fees. So we're really trying to transform the organization to really make it simple to capture the invoice automatically, capture data automatically, and then route that through the organization using that data that was captured. Right? So that's really important. And then if there's a discrepancy, we can go after an approval cycle and then promote that document and data into the ERP. All right, now I'm gonna start talking about kind of the entire um, requisition to check process. I understand that every organization may not start with a requisition. They may start with a purchase order. They may not even have the concept of requisition and purchase orders in the organization. That's okay. With DocLink, all of it is possible, but the beauty is, is that you can decide where is the paper-based bottleneck in your organization. Is it just that last section, invoice through payment, you know, those last two little boxes, or is it the entire uh, cycle or life cycle? So let's take a look at what's possible, and then met, this may also stimulate some questions. So, one of the differentiating features of DocLink is that you can use it to initiate a requisition. Um, that's really beautiful because now we're talking about one-stop shopping for the whole P2P kind of function. And also you can repurpose the tool into other kinds of forms, right? So in this case, we're gonna be looking at, I'm gonna create a requisition, I wanna drive that through an approval process. And then I want to take that requisition and I want to convert it automatically into a purchase order, right? And so that's what we're going to um, uh, showcase for you right now. All right, so right here we have signed into DocLink and I am starting to complete what's called a requisition form. Um, this is very, very configurable. So this is just to kind of highlight some of the possibilities. Um, what we would do is we would look at what you're doing in this area today and really simply uh, modify uh, your form, you know, into the smart form toolkit. Um, some other things that are nice highlights here is that anywhere where you're seeing the uh, magnifying glass is a lookup into your ERP data. That's really important because this is another opportunity of driving down data entry. All right, so top level things here, uh, you can use the smart form toolkit to create a requisition. That same tool set can be extended to other areas and it can be set up to uh, meet the objectives of your organization. So once we have created that requisition, we're now gonna send it into a workflow. This is a wonderful grid. It gives the user an idea of where their document is and how many documents they have in order to do their approval. And once we select a document and open it up, we're now able to see the requisition that was created. In this particular case, we're just looking at a very simple form. You do have an opportunity to do what's called an XSLT style sheet. And thereby, if it's really important to you to have 
a very beautiful looking form, then we can use that technology to create what's exactly looking like a form with boxes and colors and logos, etc. Some other nice things that you'll see here is that we can do what's called an electronic sticky note. So just like today on paper, you might put a post-it note. You can certainly do that uh, via the electronic sticky note. But bring your eyes over to the right-hand side of the screen. Right, so you see in this right-hand column a concept called notes. Um, this allows for you to also do a notes here in this column. You can also approve and deny here as well. It's going to capture the username and the date. And it's really, really a nice opportunity just to track the approvals of this document. And then, of course, the very next step is to say, all right, we're going to now send this off for an approval. Uh, approvals can be very simple. You can leverage the data that's been tracked about this document to say, let's send it through an automatic approval process. And those rules can be set up by dollar amount and um, whom is, uh, you know, who's doing the ordering and what is being ordered. Uh, but this is a very simple way of just getting that approval process taken place. And then the next part would be sending that into the purchase order module, right? And so in the case of the purchase order, you know, there's an opportunity to automatically capture the purchase order into DocLink. And the reason why is because we're actually creating this electronic disbursement packet. We started with a requisition. Now we're going to capture the purchase order. We can also capture the packing slip and support the receiving entry. You know, but it's all available as well via the portal. So if the vendor needed to see anything, you know, from their perspective, you know, what was that invoice? You know, what was that purchase order? They have an opportunity to do that as well. Let's take a look at the screens. So in this case, we're just simply showcasing that when you are in any of the Sage modules, there's a couple things that are going on here. So number one, we can automatically capture any document, report, or form that comes from the application, and thereby you've now captured documents, they are available for search and retrieval. Um, I had one of my customers say, why didn't you tell me about the journals? That's so important to us. So yes, you can capture journals as well, you know, and save them for search and retrieval. Um, but back to our purchase order story. Uh, here's just an example of a purchase order that has been captured. All right, if we take a look at it in a little bit more detail, we can see that we've got the image. We also have all of the data about that purchase order on the right-hand side. Um, these are called document properties or metadata. They are very important because they serve a lot of functions. Uh, number one, they're going to be your search fields if you ever want to search for any of that criteria. Uh, they're what links it to the screens in your ERP or Sage solution. Uh, they are what also links documents together. And when we start talking about automating a matching process, we're able to use those properties as well. Now, in the case of a purchase order, we may want to decide that we want to send it out to the vendor automatically. So this is just yet another option. Uh, and if you want to use this functionality, we have the ability to say, all right, we're going to capture a purchase order. And at a particular time in the day, we're going to send that PO out. And by the way, we're also going to send out some kind of supporting document. And that way, you're able to just more rapidly, you know, in a very streamlined way, you know, get this document flow going through the organization. All right. Um, let's take a look at the invoice side of things. So on the invoice side of things, this is where a lot of um, technology is being utilized in order to replace that manual process and manual data entry. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, you know, what does it mean if we say we want to do OCR capture of an invoice? And what does it mean if we want to do three-way matching? Okay, so let's take a look at what this can look like. So what would it mean right, in your organization if you're able to have an invoice come into the organization and we're able to use technology to not only capture an image of that invoice but utilize AI to interrogate and capture all of the data that's on that invoice. 
right? That's the first step in automating accounts payable and eliminating data entry because now we're using technology in order to do that. And you can see here on the screen with all of the boxes, right? That is a system already grabbing that data right away. There's also some things uh, like validations, making sure that that's a valid vendor, right, in your ERP. And if not, then it can go through a different workflow. Um, but the next step is we want to now, now that we've captured this document, we're going to send it off into workflow. One more point here that's very, very important. OCR is about capturing the document and data. Um, where it's all about trying to transform an organization and move you into more of an exception-based process versus having to touch every single invoice. So in this case, you know, I'm, I'm stopping the invoice here at OCR because I want something to be able to show you. But in reality, if OCR captures everything correctly and validates the vendor, then it's going to move this fluidly into the next step in the process. So we're trying to, again, go to a manage by exception process. So if for some reason we wanted to either, number one, do some matching, or number two, do coding, you know, then it's going to appear here in Workflow. Um, workflow is a very wonderful tool in terms of organizing the work for either AP or approvers. And you can see here on the left hand side that the work can be organized in different ways. It comes in as unprocessed, right? And then it can move through the queues depending on what's going on with that invoice. Was it approved and ready to pay? You know, has it had some kind of discrepancy? Did someone deny it? And now additional work needs to be done. So there's a lot of flexibility here in the workflow. And that's part of the discovery call. Um, so we would, you know, map your existing process and then take a look at where you need to get the most amount of efficiency. Um, here's a sample. So let's take a look at this sample. So this invoice has come in. We've OCR extracted some of the data. You see that here in the grid. And now we want to maybe say, hey, listen, you know what? But um, I want to see all of the supporting documents about this invoice. Because that invoice um, had a PO number on it, the system automatically you know, said, hey, listen, this has got a PO. Let's pull in all the related documents to that particular invoice. So you see them here. So now there's an opportunity. Um, number one, if you are using OCR and automated matching, it will systematically compare the invoice to what's on the receiving tables and the purchase order tables. And if there's a discrepancy, it would flag it and say, you know, please review this. This is somehow incorrect. Um, if OCR is too much technology for your organization, there's still a huge benefit here because we're relating all of those documents together, no more having to do manual matching, and instead the documents are presented here on the screen for you, you could still do a visual match in this particular step. Okay, what happens um, if we wanted to do a, a GL coding, right? So in, in the case of maybe a non-PO based invoice. Um, actually, you know what? Before we go to non-POs, I want to take a step back here and just do a little bit more on, on the manual side of things. So we've talked about OCR, right? Let's take a look at the purchase order side of things. Um, so when an invoice comes in and if we did not use OCR, um, we still have to give it meaning, right? So we're going to, based on the integration, select the purchase order number. And this is looking back into the SAGE data, right? And then we're able to just select from the drop down, And then that would actually populate, pull in the data from the PO. And because of that, then again, showcase the documents that were available. So um, there are two distinct options, either leveraging OCR, depending on the volume of, your, um, of invoices annually on your organization, or there's still a ton of benefit in looking at it um, without OCR and still being able to have that, you know, aggregated uh, document packet. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about non-PO based invoices and uh, traditional process would be invoices coming in. We're doing that rubber stamp and then someone is probably writing GL codes on it, whether AP or done by the approving manager and then it comes back and someone's doing data entry. 
So we can now automate that process and really drive time savings. So number one is we want to be able to potentially OCR extract that data, right? Or we can just simply use the DocLink tool set to kind of pull it out of the email and move it into workflow, which is the first step in the business process. So here are all my invoices that have been sent to me for processing. When I open them up, now within DocLink, I have an ability to do GL coding. Now this can be really a big time saver and is an important feature of DocLink because you're now looking at the invoice and we can use a concept called templates that will automatically populate data for us. And there again, eliminating the need to do data entry. Um, so if we've captured information via OCR, it can flow through. Another highlight of functionality is this fully multi-company enabled. So that's another nice feature for you. And that whole idea of templates within the most mere, I think it's like three clicks, um, open uh, template, click on the template that you're uh, that you're wanting to do it will pre-populate data for you so this is a huge time saver for organizations and if you're trying again to grow without adding headcount you know minimize data entry this is a a, a feature that's going to directly align with that need in the organization uh, once invoices are coded then it's time to send it through the approvals process and that's a huge, huge benefit because now what would you like to do? Do you want to simply, um, you know, give someone a notification? Say, hey, you've got invoices in your workflow. Please sign in and, and take care of them. You can also do an escalation. Let's say that that invoice has sat and it's starting to stall in workflow. So maybe you want to prompt someone to say, hey, listen, you know, this has been in your workflow for 48 hours. You know, what's going on? It may be that you want to escalate it through a process. It may be that that person's on vacation and they need to have set up their vacation delegation so that the invoice moves more fluidly through the process. So a lot of possibilities in terms of alerting capabilities, uh, summary alerts, uh, detailed alerts to the individual, um, also launching an email alert to launch them right into DocLink to take care of their documents. It really depends on what they're needing to do from a functional perspective, um, as well as actually just simply doing an, a very simple email approval. But the whole idea <laughs> that we're looking at trying to streamline that whole process and at the end of the day, AP is no longer having to do data entry. We're actually just taking that document and fluidly moving both the document and the transaction right into your ERP application. And you'll notice right here that there's a nice view documents button. So this is prolific throughout the application. And whenever you've used DocLink to um, initiate that transaction, you'll be able to view that document right from within the Sage windows as well. And so not only just the um, header information, but all of the details of that invoice get populated uh, appropriately. And then it's off to, to payment capture. Payment capture and overall search and retrieval. Um, so within DocLink, one of the nice tenants is, is that we're trying to give you documents at your fingertips. And so instead of having to go to a filing cabinet, which is linearly organized, you have everything right available. So let's look at DocLink and search for a check. So I'm going to just look for a check by the check number. And when I say, hey, show me the check, here's the check number, it's automatically going to open up for me. So I see I have this check information. Now, that's cool, but you know, what I really want to do is look for all the documents that are related to this check. So you'll see if I go back to my grid, right, and I simply hover over, then it's going to show me, hey, give me everything related to that particular check number. And then automatically, I see all the possibilities of the documents that relate to that check. And then it's as simple as selecting what documents do you want to view, and here they are open on the screen. 
All right. So a beautiful way of now being able to kind of drill down and drill around into the documents that you need and better also answer any kind of question in the organization. Audit support. Remember, we talked about audit at the very, very top of the hour. So notice how from an audit perspective, we're tracking who did what, when, where, why, you know, to that document as it's, as it's moving through the organization. All right, so I hope that that was compelling on AP automation. So let's do a little bit of a summary poll because I'm curious to know for everybody out there kind of what's going on in the organization. So Katie, do we do yeah. we want to No, that, Carolyn, thank you so much for that snapshot of uh, kind of almost endless possibilities right within our ERP <laughs> system. So yes. exciting. So our next um, Third polling question are what are your biggest challenges? So is it accessing critical data and information, um, manual and inefficient approval processes, centralized storage, or unable to work remotely or other? So click away. Oh, let us know, right? It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so unable to work remotely, a hundred percent. Okay, okay, and I and I get it. <laughs> even for me so i'm in sales obviously but having access to contracts you know for my customers is really important as well so i can understand you know what was purchased or where there's special terms so I, I get it having easy access to documents is really really critical all right so we're talking about transforming our organizations and and i hope if ap was kind of critical to you and it sounds like it was from that initial poll uh, that that kind of gave you a quick showcase on what was possible. And our invitation is, is that, you know, if anything resonates and you really think, oh my goodness, yes, I do have a paper issue and it's time to take action, you know, reach out to BrainCell. Let's do that discovery call so we can really work with you and help you see where you can solve the issues and really drill down into that ROI for you as well. So I want to move kind of quickly through these next pieces. Um, let's take a look at the quote to cash side of the house. Now there's still here a lot of possibilities in terms of what we can do. Um, even though we can facilitate the entire umbrella, right? a lot of people seem to home in on the AR portion of that you know, big, big um, flow chart, if you will. And it's all about being able to more quickly not only send out the AR invoice, right? Sage has functionality to support that, but it's actually about delivering some kind of companion document. Maybe it's a signed delivery receipt. Uh, you know, maybe it's some other kind of document, uh, but the ability to send out the invoice, you know, and a companion document is really critical in this arena. But of course, I want to challenge you as well to think about the entire equation. So um, while AR invoice delivery has traditionally been a really critical business process, what I'm actually seeing now is this entire equation. So people are really wanting to be able to, you know, capture the entire document packet and be able to search for it by that metadata. So whether it's by customer name, customer number, sales order number, part number, right? So you start thinking about all of those different possibilities. But really, it's um, very, very critical, and many customers are wanting to automate uh, onboarding that customer PO again using OCR in order to capture that and then put it through some kind of review process in order to automatically create the sales order. So let's look at how we might utilize DocLink um, for this particular process. So the same questions come about. What is the document? How is it produced? And that's going to tell us what way we want to capture it. So it could be that we're capturing the quote directly out of Sage, very similar to what I showed you on the purchase order. The customer PO, that's an external document coming in. Do we want to use OCR to track that and extract the data? Or do we simply want to use DocLink to take it out of email and put it in workflow to begin the processing? So there's a lot of possibility. We just ask what, you know, where do you want to start in the organization? 
Each document then can go through a business process. It's up to you. Who needs to review that document? What action needs to be taken prior to that document and data being moved into the ERP? And then of course, we're back to the story about being able to easily search and retrieve those documents by any of the transactional data. And of course, do that delivery as well. Um, now I had a customer that actually up in, in Pacoima, I'm in California, <laughs> and they were able to cut their AR time by 90%. I mean, these are real figures by customers. So if your business issue is really centered around AR invoice processing, then let's have a conversation and really kind of map out what you're doing today, you know, where those bottlenecks are and how Doctly can really facilitate your process. Um, let's move a little bit into HR um, and talk a little bit about, well, you know, we're talking about, you know, automatic document capture, we're talking about, you know, an approval cycle, we're talking about easy access to documents, um, not only easy access, but secure access to documents. So how might this be utilized on the HR side of the house? Um, so here are some ideas. And I just want to share this slide because I think it's helpful to get companies thinking, right? Doclink is all about solving very specific business issues that you're experiencing. And we want to help you, you know, drive automation in your organization. So in the HR world, we want to think about, right, what's going on? Where are the paper mace bottlenecks? Um, would it be very helpful if you could streamline the onboarding process of new employees? Is that where the bottleneck is? Uh, do you want to be able to automatically update employees and deliver documents automatically? Are you having a, um, a compliancy issue? You know, do you need to more securely manage your documents? Do you want to put your applications through an automatic approval process? Right, and I love this one. Let's say that you are a highly technical environment and you need to track your employees' um, uh, certifications and expiration dates because it's required that they are certified on a particular timeline. All of that is possible with Doclink. It goes back to that initial document, what's or um, a diagram, which is what is the document? How do we want to capture it? Do we need to put it through a business process? Do we want to update the ERP? Who needs to search and retrieve it? Really, it's as simple as that. You know, it's kind of like that whole idea of it's as simple and as complex as that. Um, you know, so that's that's just kind of a fun a fun way of explaining it. Uh, we have lots of customers using Doclink in the HR world as well. I like this particular organization, Econo Supermarket, because they are a pretty large organization um, based out of Puerto Rico. Uh, and they had a need in HR where they wanted to really streamline the onboarding of their uh, employee applications. So they were able to do that. Uh, they also then, once they were up and running in HR, did an AP, a traditional AP deployment. Um, so if, if you're curious to know more, you know, let BrainCell know and we can get out some more information on the HR side. Now, our last kind of example, and hopefully, you know, we want to showcase different ways because I think uh, when we showcase different possibilities, you know, then organizations can really decide what's important to them and where do you want to begin your paperless joint journey. Uh, so our last kind of adventure today is in contract management and then we can maybe open it up for a little bit of Q&A. So very interesting, I have some, uh, what I would call active sales cycles, if you will, with prospects that are thinking about purchasing Doclink. And one of them was, um, oddly enough, it's a local supermarket chain and they wanted to, con um, to manage certificates of insurance. And so it's really, really critical for them to manage the expiration date you know, of that certificate and then make sure everyone has the, uh, the insurance, the required insurance in place. Uh, so not uncommon to use Doclink you know, for contract management. So th the big question that I'm always asking people is, what is the business issue? What is the financial implication to your organization? 
because if you as a as a customer understand the the true requirement and the financial impact to your organization in your own mind you can be starting to set a budget for what would be an appropriate uh, budget amount to you know purchase technology um, in contract management though we're really really looking at these issues of you know the lack of visibility of of the expiration date of that contract um, you know, not being able to put it through some kind of business process so that you can adhere to the expiration dates, have great visibility and control of renegotiating that contract or lease or, or insurance, you know, and just making sure that you're really adhering to all of the corporate guidelines that you have internally. Lots of possibilities, right? So hopefully this is sounding very, very similar and it's starting to get repetitive, right, on purpose. Do we want to simply store that contract, you know, in the system? Um, is it a search and compliance issue that you're addressing? Because Docklink can give you anywhere access via a mobile application, via the web. Uh, is it about version control and being able to get signatures, you know, of contracts timely and then storing those contracts in one centralized area? You know, or are you really trying to do contract templates and be able to reduce data entry? So we know that there's tons of different kinds of contracts. It does not matter in the DocLink world because those basic tenants remain true, right? So what do you want to do with DocLink? Do you want to generate a contract? Do you want to automate the routing process for an approval process and signature? Do you want to track that expiration date? Or are you simply interested in storing signed contracts for easy search and viewing? So a lot of possibilities here. It really goes back to what's in your filing cabinets, you know, how did it get there? You know, what are the costs of doing business manually today? Um, there are tons of areas that we can look to in DocLink uh, to help automate the business process. So in my mind, I say think broadly, you know, like I said earlier, what's in your filing cabinet? What's on the warehouse floor or what's on your network file share? Right. There are many, many different areas that we can use DocLink to streamline the business process. It's really up to you in your organization. Um, now, we know also that we share the community with a lot of different competitors. And I think it's important to understand what sets DocLink apart in the marketplace. So after much kind of like soul searching and viewing, um, you know, various competitor websites and, and demonstrations, I think it boils down to these elements. I'm going to pop them all on the screen here. Okay. So number one is DocLink is more than just an AP solution. And I think that I've kind of proven that a little bit today in showcasing a couple different areas in, within an organization that you can use DocLink. Number two is, especially on the AP side of the house, we can manage that entire procure to pay process, specifically um, requisition creation with smart forms and OCR and automated three-way matching is key. Um, our, can, our workflow engine is the engine that is putting documents through an approval process. So the important part there is it can really manage to any kind of rule that you can come up with. Um, being able to support the remote workforce via the a mobile application or via the web is critical. Smart forms, right? We showed that to you today through the lens of a requisition, but DocLink can also do it for an expense report, a credit card processing smart form, a vacation request form. All right, so think about the forms that you're creating in your organization today and what would it mean if you could have that centralized uh, place to not only create but store those documents. And then you're able to uh, purchase and deploy DocLink in a methodology that resonates with your organization. So maybe you know your CFO or likes to purchase with a perpetual plan. That means you're buying the software outright and you're and you're doing a manual or manual annual <laughs> renewal. Uh, maybe subscription is critical for your organization. So you're just simply paying that annual fee, you know, um, and in the perpetuity of you owning the software. There's also a cloud offering, so you can have DocLink on premise in a hosted environment 
or in the DocLink cloud, and that provides a lot of flexibility for organizations as well, especially in today's climate where things seem to be moving and shaking and going towards the cloud uh, with a lot of emphasis, it seems like. And then lastly, you know what? Um, DocLink truly, truly has world-class products. There is a depth of functionality in DocLink that I don't see with other applications. We can do very, very rapid implementations, again, depending on what your requirements are. And I love our customer support team. And so we always get glowing reviews on customer support. It's part of our kind of organization strategy is to have like a customer intimate strategy, meaning that we really, really treasure you as the customer. And we wanna make sure that we're helping you meet your business needs. Um, and when you call tech support, you know they're gonna get back to you very, very quickly to make sure that you are up and running. And that if you have an issue or a question or ongoing education needs that we're there to support you. All right, so we have about 10 minutes left. Let's do maybe our one last poll, and then we can open it up for um, some Q&A, okay? Yeah. So, Katie, what do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. I, I just want to say, wow, you gave us a lot of information to kind of take in and process. So, um, let's just, yeah, wrap this up. What did you learn from today's webinar? Uh, DocLink provides capabilities for a hybrid workforce. DocLink mm -hmm. has tight integration with your ERP. DocLink works across many departments, and we could use this. Ready to learn more? Contact me. Okay, I'm all in on D. <laughs> yes, that Perry Lynn's going to vote for D. Yeah. Well, and C. Yeah, I especially appreciate those customer examples as well, Perry Lynn. That really kind of takes that home all the information that you provided and makes it real for, oh, thank for you. these customers that are on this webinar as well. Oh, absolutely. It's really all about trying to, what is it to help, you know, drive customer success? You know, so you as a customer, what do we need to do to help you bring your organization to the next level? Yeah, so um, I think we're ready for Q&A, and I just want to remind right. everyone to please drop in any questions you have into that little question box. Um, mm -hmm. But Perry Lynn, are you ready? First question. So. All right. Uh -oh. <laughs> Can, are you ready? <laughs> You're in, the hot so. seat. You're in the hot seat. Can files from okay. outside departments be imported into DocLink ERP in an order for AP or AR to see those documents as a part of a streamlined workflow? Yes, yes. So remember, we, sh we showed that, that diagram where you can be looking at the invoice and be looking at the packing slip, the purchase order, email correspondence, you know, all about that document. And if there's any other thing, any other document that you want to bring in, that's a possibility as well. So think about it. Any document, any report, any form, any process, it's all possible. Uh, good question. Great. So second question, I assume this is a full package purchase. Is that true, mm -hmm. Perry Lynn? It is a full package purchase, but here's the interesting part. It is modular. So what that means to you is that you can purchase just the modules that you need to facilitate your business process. Right. Well, let's say you just wanted that document library only, right? That's your first step you know, into, into the sea of document management. You could do that. And then conversely, if you wanted to do full automation across the organization, then we would set you up with a quote that made sense for you as, the, or as, as a customer. So absolutely, it's all about what's going to drive that need in your organization. Great. That's super helpful. All right. I think our last question, uh, put you on the spot here. How can I acquire DocLink on-prem cloud hosted provider monthly subscription pay as you go? And I think you did answer that in that last slide. but. That's correct. That's correct. So all of those are possible. Um, so it just depends on how you as an organization like to purchase software and then also how do you want to deploy it. Um, so, you know, if, if any of this has resonated with you today, let's, you know, set up a discovery call so we can really talk through, you know, how are you doing business today? What are those financial implications, meaning what is the time, you know, on each of those steps or other kind of uh, implication? And then we can put together a preliminary quote and gear up for a product demonstration. Great. Thank you so much. So I oh, think um, 
we are going to go to that one of those last slides right as a thank you okay. for attending so this is um oh. this is the the hurrah right so yeah. a special promo for all our attendees that you will get 10 percent off DocLink subscription orders mm -hmm. until september 30th so right we understand that there's a lot of information to take in and to kind of uh mull over so that is there so until september 30th so really really exciting um and then the last slide is just our contact information, right? Yes. So uh, if you wanna continue this discussion, right? Uh, please feel free to reach out to us directly, um, but we will be following up with you as well, just to find out how um, everything went today and just to get your feedback. So I just wanted Love to it. thank you so much, Perry Lynn, for just a wonderful you. webinar. Uh, you, I think you hit it hit a home run here. So I hope everyone oh, on this call enjoyed it as well. But thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we look forward, hopefully, uh, talking soon. Thank you, Perry.